Here we are at the end of the year, so we gotta do a yearly makeup favorites video. These are the products that I've loved for the year of 2023 and actually use about 90% of the makeup on my face right now. So I think that this look is actually quite a good representation of my makeup choices for the year. So I'm super excited to share with you guys what I've loved and without further ado, let's get into it. Shall we start off with base makeup first for foundation? Liquid foundation, I didn't really have any that I really gravitated towards. I feel like I'm more of a cushion foundation person because for the ease of application and how fast free the application is. So for cushion foundation, I have the Espoir B Velvet Cover Cushion. Yes, you heard me right. If you've been on my channel before, you know that I absolutely love Cleo's cushion foundation. I have it with me actually, the, the one that went viral, the one that's Kill Cover, the new Found Wear Cushion, this this one over here, the one in a little square. I actually did manage to get my hands on it and I tried it out, I'm like, kind of thing, but anyway, it's not a review on this. The finish is a very velvety finish and I feel like the colour itself, I think this I can get away with because after getting my personal colour analysis done, I realised I'm like a 21 cool tone apparently, but I don't know how true it's true because look at my skin. This is looking quite olive. But I feel that with neutral foundation cushions or neutral foundations, whatever it is, I feel that I can get away with it easier compared to straight up pink cushions. So that's why I, out of all the cushion foundations that I brought back from Korea, this was the one that I keep um, gravitating towards. I think what really blew me away with this cushion foundation is the coverage. The coverage is great. Like it covers all of your acne scars, acne marks and it adheres pretty well for me. Granted, I have heard some people saying that this doesn't adhere well for them. For me, it does the job. And I do set it down with powder as well. So when it comes to this, I really make sure I lock it in place and it doesn't really like go anywhere. The velvet finish makes my skin look a little bit like powdery, but still it looks very skin-like. It doesn't crease easily either, of course, when I set it down with powder and all that. So I'm very, very impressed with this powder and I absolutely love it. I am considering of getting the liquid version of this based off how much I love this cushion foundation. I do have one more refill of this, so I'm definitely will repurchase this and I hope that Espa will keep this particular formula of the Be Velvet Cushion Foundations and I'm definitely going to keep my eye out for Espoir in 2024. For the under eyes, this has been a staple product and this is the Fenty Beauty Under Eye Eye Brightener Illuminator. I have it in the shade number 6, Melon. Currently have this on my under eyes and whenever I go even travelling, this comes together with me. I think this is great for people who struggle with covering their under eye circles because for me personally, I don't have super dark under eyes but it has this very weird hue of like grayish blue a little bit and even when covering it with regular concealer it doesn't really do a good job and it actually accentuates the gray and ashiness and you can see like the color and outline of the dark under eye circles. This has done a great job. For concealers in 2023, I didn't really use much to be honest. I only very recently, like in the last month or so, picked up like three or four concealers because I needed to like refresh my collection. But the one that I did have for quite a while is actually the Mix and Match Bling Glow concealer over here and you can see how much I've used this and I use these two shades on top to actually cover up my pimples and all that. It has a very like sticky and tacky finish but also rather stiff in nature as well. I found it to be quite flexible and it actually moves along with the skin really nicely so I actually really really enjoyed this concealer palette over here and I think it's quite affordable too. I think it was maybe like $15? I'm not really sure. By the way, all the products that I'll be mentioning today, check the description box down below. I'll have listed it down there and also have links for you guys to check it out. Your girl has been stressing out recently and my skin has been breaking out like mad as well. So that's why I, I'm not really sure what's going on but... It is what it is and I genuinely enjoyed this particular concealer a lot. For powder, I don't have a 
Strictly Asian Beauty powder. I think that this year really wasn't a year of powders for at least Asian beauty. The Western beauty side of things, yes. But the one that I really like went back to and fell in love was actually the Laura Mercier Loose Translucent Setting Powder. This is how it looks like. Mine's a very, really old, like packaging holiday season thing and I have it on my under eyes and all over my face I found that this really helped to make my skin look airbrushed and flawless and I think mixed in together with the humidity of Singapore it really does wear very very well this particular powder I think it does have a little bit of like that white undertone to it for some reason it says it's translucent but I don't really buy it because whenever I try and clean my brush there's this like whitish color to it so that's one thing if you guys should take note and normally what I'll do nowadays is actually take a triangular powder puff and use it to set it under my eyes. My foundation doesn't really crease that easily either when I wear this particular powder so it's one of my go-tos and I am very happy to fall back in love with the Laura Mercier translucent powder because I remember not liking this when I was younger but I think when I was younger I had Mm, less problematic skin as well as more of like a drier skin type felt like this was a bit too drying for me back then but right now I think maybe I've gotten a little bit oilier when it comes to cheek products for blush I have liquid and powdered blush for liquid blushes it's still the rare beauty blushes these are the best and particularly I still love the shade Hope. This is the perfect like mauve nude color and I absolutely love it. It's still a favorite. I think I did mention this last year. <laughs> I think it never changed but because ever since I found out that I'm like cool tone or summer tone, I actually been reaching for the shade Happy as well. So for today's look, I actually did mix the two shades together and whatever you see on my cheeks right now is kind of what the two colors are together. It's actually really really pretty. Today is the first time I actually mix the two colors together and I, well, maybe I'll do it more often. So normally when I go traveling and because these are like the mini sizes, I these go with me like everywhere. It's just so easy to apply on the cheeks and really a little bit does go a long way. I had this for maybe like two years, maybe slightly longer than that. Sounds unhygienic, I know, but I'm using it on myself. So, so far, so good. No issues or anything. It's not, it's, this is not the reason why I'm breaking out, you know. I'm perfectly okay continuing to like use this. And I'm still waiting for the day I run out of this and I'll buy the full size of it. <laughs> for powder blush, this is where I'll play cheat a little bit. I have a couple of favorites, but they're all from Basic over here. And these are the Blending Mood Cheek blushes over here and I have a couple so let me explain myself. Let's start off this one. This is the Blueberry Sorbet palette over here. So I got this when I was in Korea and I was like really digging into like the whole cool tone thing. I'm like okay I gotta try this out. This palette worked really well when you're wearing very like cool tone looks and because this is very like light and pastel in tone, very strong like white base to it, sometimes it doesn't really work the best on days where I'm wearing like barely any makeup or I'm just I just want something on my um cheeks because just because right you see it's it's really light so I ended up getting this one the violet knit one still quite light in tone but it's there's not a lot of white base to it and this top one over here is the deeper one so you can see very very light blushes this was like a good sister palette to this one over here I think when it came to doing like cool tone looks if I wanted something a little bit deeper I'll reach for this and I wanted something a little bit lighter then I'll go for this palette over here but then surprisingly between like these two right these two palettes I actually reached out for almond vanilla more this was my go-to palette when I did not know what blush should I put on my cheek, especially if I was doing more colourful looks. And the colour that I went for the most is actually this colour over here. I think this is a great nudie beige. It's very unique and this is how it looks like. This particular colour just worked so well with a lot of the looks that I wore. Even on days where I didn't know what to put on my cheeks and all that, just gave a nice healthy flush to my cheeks. And because this is like a baked formula, so it's like a dome, I don't know if you guys can see this, but um, this is the f this one over here is the flattest out of the four. As I was reflecting back, I was thinking like which blush that I really like use a lot and really was this, this nude 
beige brown color and I was quite surprised myself because I genuinely thought that it was gonna be like a purple or a mauve blush or something like that but honestly this just shows that sometimes when it comes to doing like personal color you don't really have to follow strictly to oh purple blush mauve blush that kind of thing I actually really want to do an update video towards um, me getting my personal color done because I have thoughts <laughs> on that and how people are like all up and upset. I remember somebody saying like, oh, personal colors are scam and all that kind of thing. And I'm like, okay. I think it would be helpful if I did an updated video. I don't know. What do you guys think? For bronzer, it's definitely not an Asian beauty brand, but it's from a Western brand and it's from one of my favorite brands, Pat McGrath. So this is actually in the shade Nude Honey. And this has been a great bronzer. Um, for warming up foundations that are a little bit too light, I just need some warmth to my skin if not I'm looking a little bit flat. I'm not wearing any bronzer today actually, I'm wearing just blush and contour. This has been a great bronzer and it does work pretty well because I realise that I'm kind of olive toned right and it does work pretty well for me. It doesn't look too red, it doesn't look too muddy either. It looks so good, it works so well. Blends like a dream as well. For contour, what I'm wearing right now is the Tuku Fosco Art Class by Rodin in Modern. So of course, this is like an OG kind of thing. And I recently repurchased this because I used to own the warm one way, 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 way long time ago, like in 2018. And I kind of threw that out quite a while back as well. So normally what I'll do is I'll take like the lighter shade as like my nose contour or maybe like mix in between these two. And then I'll take the general three over here for all over my face and the cheeks and everything. And I feel like it does a really good job. I know some people don't really like this because they say it's like patchy and what not have you. But for me personally, I think it works out pretty well. I don't think my contour looks patchy. In fact, it looks rather natural. For my colour and skin tone, I think this worked really really well and I absolutely love the colour. So you can see that I have made quite a dent in the centre over here because this is normally the middle shade is what I'll usually reach for the most. So yeah, Akras by Rodin. I can never go wrong with this. Highlighter, I don't have any because really this really was the year for me for matte look and even whatever like shine that you're seeing on my cheeks right now it's really like minimal and if there is any shine it's probably due to sweat so yeah I don't have a highlighter. <laughs> Moving on to eyes for eyebrow pencils. Surprisingly I didn't really test any new eyebrow pencils or even if I did I didn't really feel very strongly or loved it or whatsoever so Moving on to eyebrow powder, I'm not sure if I mentioned this last year but the Kate Designing Eyebrow, I'm currently wearing this in my brows right now and it's actually a trio of eyebrow powders. I believe I had this brow powder for quite some time already, maybe slightly over a year, year and a half-ish. And I think the reason why I keep gravitating back towards this is because of the fact that it's so easy to use, so fast free. Even when I use the free applicator inside, most of the times I'm using this, I'm just going in and I'm just like roughly applying it to my brows. It just adds so much volume to my brows and I know I'm blessed with very um, thick incised brows. They are quite naturally like this. Steering away from the darkest brown because I normally will only use this for maybe like the tail and nowadays I'm trying to go for a lighter colored brow and what I'll do is I'll use these two over here that's why you see such a deep trench in there and I'll usually use these two to fill out my brows and maybe use like this brown over here mix here and then I'll like carve out the tail over here and you would think like brow powders wouldn't stick to the skin this actually does hold in my brow hairs really really well and I just think this is a great product. I, I'm really excited because I don't know if I told you guys yet but I'm actually going to Japan like um, next year in 2024. I've booked the tickets already so I'm super excited to actually check out more J Beauty. I'm slowly diving into it, you know, tiptoeing a little bit here and there. So 
Kate as a brand, I mean just trying out this alone by itself, it really wowed me so really excited to see more from Kate. We have eye primers as well. You guys know I've always said this so so many times on my channel that I always believe in having eye primers like a good quality one. So the one that I use is always from Western Brands. Uh, we have the Urban Decay Primer Potion as well as the MAC Paint Pot over here. I actually just picked up another one from the 12 12 sales here and I genuinely love the MAC paint pot so much they do a great job in covering like the discoloration on my lids and just evening everything out so that's usually my not say biggest secret but that's my biggest tip for people who want to have really, really nice eyeshadow looks most of the times in real life a lot of people are asking me like how do you make your eyeshadows look so clean I can see the color and everything please 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 use an eyeshadow primer because they really do help in making your eyeshadow look great. The one that I use today is Soft Ochre. It has more of like a yellow base to it and I had it for like quite some time. The new one that I just picked up is actually the shade Painterly. I think this was like highly raved back in like 2017, 2018. All the beauty gurus have been using it but listen, I, I'm slow. To the trend okay i only now can afford to pick up all of these products so you know what better late than never and i genuinely love these products a lot now this eyeliner i only managed to try it in the second half of the year but i was so blown away by it and i constantly reach out for it and it's the can make creamy touch liner i have mine in the shade cloudy gray if i am not wrong so it's kind of like a grayish brown and it's a very unique color look at this this color is so unique i love it so much and i love how thin the applicator is it's so precise especially for my asian eyes sometimes i feel that eyeliners are a little bit like too like chunky a little bit too big and i can't really get a very precise application i love how tiny this applicator and the size of it it's just so precise and it's very easy for me to get into like very close to the lash line without really like tugging or pulling at my skin so i think that is great and it's so creamy like it really lives up to its name and once it sets it sets it's like not going anywhere even in singapore's humidity so i was like this is wow amazing our local pharmacies they had like some 40 percent makeup sale i bought two more and i bought them in one in like brown or like burgundy if i am not wrong i i really want to get one more of this particular color because i think this color as well is great especially because of the fact that you know cool tone looks and all that and this really unlocked a new love which is like gray eyeliners so if i were to compare black eyeliners brown eyeliners and gray eyeliners i would pick gray eyeliners and in between like black and brown eyeliners i'll pick brown but if i have to pick between brown and gray i will pick gray because this color over here adds the right amount of depth and definition in that line but also it's not like jet black and deep because i feel that black eyeliners really too harsh for my eyes at least i think for my face as time progressed i realized that softer colors diffused looks Nothing too harsh as well, be it application or colour. They will always enhance my features a little bit better compared to having like very stark jet black or bright colours, neons on my face. I realise that softer colours really do work well for me. So this colour, it is like the perfect colour for me. Now for eyeshadow palettes, I have two with me. One that is a K-Beauty eyeshadow palette and the other one is actually a Western brand. But it's drugstore, so it's affordable and the quality on it, so good. Let's start off with the Asian Beauty one, the K-Beauty one, and it's from Raw Man. This is the Peony Nude Garden Eyeshadow Palette. This is one of my go-to palettes for the year of 2023. I did get recommended this when I did my personal color analysis. This is a good palette because it's matte heavy and you get two shimmers over here. Honestly, the shimmers are a bit meh for me. But the colors of this particular palette works very, very well. It's a great palette for people who want maybe you're going to school, going to office. You need something a little bit more natural but you still want to lean in towards more of those a cool tone mauves and also a bit of purples as well so you definitely can check out this particular palette i think this is great i've said this before about Roman palettes um but i love the fact that they actually range from the lightest to the darkest 
tonally. I think this is very important when it comes to building up eyeshadow looks. And for today, I'm actually wearing a very, very light, barely there, a little bit of eyeshadow. It's matte. You'll never catch me wearing matte eyeshadows normally. I love to have glitters on my eyelids. I did have it on my Igyosau, couldn't get away with it. But this particular palette, I think it is a really good palette, especially for cool tone summer girls. If you are one, please check this out. If you have the chance, swatch it at a store or something because I genuinely like, like this a lot. The formula of this is a little bit more on the powdery side and there's a little bit of kick up as well. But I think that for what it is, I think this is a great palette, especially if you're starting off with makeup. The drugstore eyeshadow palette that I absolutely love is from Catrice. This is actually the Pure Nude eyeshadow palette and this is how it looks like over here. Now, this was actually recommended um, by one of my mutuals here on YouTube. Shout out to Marta. I'll drop her link down in the description box below. Go check her out. She's amazing. And I remember watching her video like last year, if I'm not wrong, about this palette. I'm like, oh, that palette actually looks really, really nice. It's a German brand. And knowing how long it takes for things overseas to reach Singapore shores, yeah, I can take a while. I can take a good like year or so. And true enough, this took a year. So I was asking her like, what was this palette? I have never seen this before. Because we do have Catrice here in Singapore, but it's not like a very diverse choice, I would say. It's good. The quality of this for 12 Singapore dollars, oh my god, it's like buttery smooth. And also the color of this, it's not too warm, it's not too cool. Truly is a nude neutral palette. So I think this will work on anybody. Again, it ranges from a very light matte over here. You also get a light champagne-y shimmer. As well, you get deep dark browns. I feel like this could be a deeper brown. But for drugstore, I think this is great. For 12 Singapore dollars, and they are so creamy as well. They are not as powdery as the raw man ones, but still, wow. The shimmers, great, great quality as well. And the color choices of the shimmers, very easy to use as well. Very appropriate for any events or just work and all that. I am shocked by how good this is and no one else is really like talking about it. Not even here in Singapore. I think these two complement each other really well. You have like even some purples here to play with and all that and you're like, maybe I'm a little bit scared of purples and all that. Then you can go for this. This is really a very, very safe eyeshadow palette. I really think anybody can wear this. We have liquid glitters as well. You can see that on my eyes currently I have one. This is like... Underrated, nobody talks about as well. <laughs> Gatekeeping it a little bit, yeah. It's from Code Glow Core, and this is the Bling Glitter. I got this in Korea as well, and I'm pretty sure I picked this like two pieces of this, but maybe one fell out of my basket when I was at Olive Young, and I don't know. I only have one with me, and I'm so so sad because this glitter is so stinking pretty, and it's literally what glitter dreams are made of. I have it in the shade Splash Love. So it does have like a pink base to it and it does have chunky hunky glitters in it. And the chunky hunky glitters, you get kind of like that aqua blue reflex and oh, it is so stunning. Nobody is talking about it at all. I low-key I'm happy nobody's talking about it and this is just a between you and me thing, okay? In Korea, I only paid like maybe 10 12 dollars if i'm not wrong online it's like 23 i'm like why is it so expensive so i'm not really sure if i ever pay so much for this but i'll make sure i'll use this up and oh, i love this liquid glitter so so much for mascara we have 1028 extend curl waterproof mascara this this was a whole new discovery for me what do you say it's better than the clear kill lash well, that's, that's tough. That's like a statement. I'm not so sure about that, but I feel that this particular mascara adds a lot of volume as well to my lashes. I have very short, straight Asian lashes. Yes, this was actually kind of gifted to me in PR, so I'm really thankful for it. I'm not, I'm not sponsored, I swear. Like, I think it's drying out and it's clumpy already, so my lashes doesn't look on fleek. 
today. It looks a little bit clumpy. But I genuinely enjoyed this mascara a lot and I think it's just time for it to, you know, go. My lashes stayed up the whole day with no crumbling and there's no smudging either and I was very very impressed by it and it just holds the curls so so well. I wish they actually came out with maybe like a, another colour, maybe like a brown or a grey or another colour because I feel like black lashes, yes it makes my lashes stand out. Maybe if there was like a brown colour, maybe it make my lashes look really like long and like standing out but not so like harsh and intense. So that's one thing maybe I wish 1028 would do or maybe they have done it, I don't know, I'll check it out. For lips, we right now we have lip liner. The lip liner that I actually really really enjoy is actually from Sephora. This is the Nano Crayon Lip Liner to go over here. This is the actual size of it. It's really really tiny but it's very affordable. I think it's like 12 Singapore dollars if I'm not wrong. And I am currently wearing this on my lips right now and this is in the shade light brown. So I think this particular shade, it worked really really well whenever I paired it with a lot of other lip tints, lipsticks because normally the brown shade will always help to deepen the natural lip line but at the same time add some like definition and because it's brown, beige, it's closer to the skin tone it just helps to blend a little bit better with other lipsticks. I know Korean lip liners are a thing right now, lip Koreans and all that. I'm still trying to get into the trend. I do have a couple with me um, but they are not like a ride or die thing, like it's not a must for me but I still feel that lip liners, western brands lip liners, they are just A+, chef kiss, great quality and this is one of them so this lip liner actually pairs really really well with the lip tint that I'm wearing right now on my lips. Would you like to take a guess what I'm having on my lips right now? My lip tint pick for the year of 2023. Amuse Gel Fit Lip Tint in Soul Girl. Hmm. Oh my god, like I think it's this lip tint is so good. It has great coverage, juicy looking finish, and obviously you can build it up. As you can see, at the start of the video, obviously it was looking way much more juicy, but I've taken like sips of water in between takes and all that. It still looks so good. When I purse my lips, it doesn't feel heavy. It feels very lightweight, and it's not like settling into like the lip lines, obviously you can see the separation between like my inner like skin mouth lip flesh thing and my lip itself. I actually did mention that I have another shade called Gorgeous Morph and if you guys are interested in seeing like my top 7 lippies for summer cool tone girls, please check out my most recent video as well so if you guys want like a more detailed explanation, please check out that video and also please check out Soul Girl. I don't know, for the year of 2023, I feel like I liked a lot of underrated or not so like hyped up products for the year and honestly, I'm kind of glad because like more for me, less for the others. Let me know what are your makeup favourites for the year of 2023. I would love to hear from you guys. Drop it down in the comments below and if you did enjoy this video, help a girl out. Leave a like, subscribe down below, love to see you guys around and if you are interested in checking out my other videos, you can check out this video over here.